Hi, I'm Kelly from Kelly Jones Jewelry. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this cute little heart pendant. It's for an undrilled heart shaped caption. It is a bit fiddly this one. I've put a list in the description below of everything you'll need to make it along with all the usual links. We've got Facebook and Instagram and there's my Etsy shop where I sell all of my written tutorials. To make this pendant you'll need 0.8mm wire, that's 20 gauge, and I've cut two lengths at 11 inches which is 28 centimetres, and one length at 8 inches which is 20 centimetres, and today I'm using square wire. You can use round wire if you want to. Weaving wire, I'm using 0.315mm which is 28 gauge, you can use a step up or down on any of these wire gauges, and you'll need about 200 centimetres. I've wound mine onto a bobbin. This is a Bobby's bobbin by Beadsmith. If you don't have a bobbin, you could just cut lengths as you go. I do recommend those because they are really good. You'll need an undrilled heart for this one. Um, mine is 25 millimetres by 30 millimetres across. So just a little heart shape. You could possibly use a round cabochon or um, a teardrop, maybe an oval, I'm not quite sure if it would hold it well, but it is better with a heart shaped stone for this particular design. So we're going to start about four and a half inches from the beginning of those wires. Four and a half is just over 11 centimetres. So take your weaving wire. And we're going to start with three wraps around that bottom wire. And then we're going to go three wraps around both wires. So that's our repeat. So we're going to do that 15 times. Three wraps around the bottom wire, three wraps around both wires, and as you're doing these wraps, keep pushing them together to keep it nice and tidy. So I've done 15 repeats of that weave. Look at the weaving wire from the beginning and flatten that little bit down. And we're going to take this weave and we're going to bend it. Bend it round into a complete loop. that a little bit and then I'm going to bend it back straight so all your wires come back together there and you've got a, a nice big loop so now we need all the wires to sit nice and straight next to each other and we're going to weave across all four so I'm going to go once around the bottom two up between around the middle two up between those around the top two, up between those, over the top, so I've gone around the top one, come up between the middle two, and go over the third one, up between the bottom two, over that second one, and then we go around the bottom wire. 
So we go around two wires on the way up. And then on the way back down, we go around each wire singularly. And keep pushing your weave together as you go. I'm using nylon pliers, you can use your fingers if you haven't got any. So I've done two repeats of that little weave, that big weave, <laughs> two repeats of that weave over all four wires. So now take the outer wires and just pull them straight out to the sides out the way. So now we're going to weave across these two middle wires. So bring your wire over the bottom wire. So we're going to go around that bottom wire another couple of times, so that's like three wraps there. And then we go three wraps around the two wires. So we just repeat that again. And while I remember, please mention me, Kelly Jones Design, <clears throat> when you're sharing your finished work made from my tutorials online. Thanks everybody, because I know a lot of you already do, and I really appreciate it. So we'll finish with three wraps around a single wire to hold that all together. So that's what we've got so far. So when you've done that, we can cut that weaving wire. I know this looks like a bit of a strange one this week. And now we're going to bend these two wires straight out as well, like we did with the top ones. And then take your pliers and grip the end of this wire and we're going to twist it. Gently pull on it a little as you twist it so it keeps it all nice and even. And we're going to keep twisting this wire until we get a nice little twist. If you're not using square wire then you don't need to do this bit, you can just leave it out. If you're using square wire We've got all those sharp edges on the wire. If you twist it, it just makes it look really pretty. So I twisted mine for about another 20 or 30 seconds after you, after I stopped the video then. Just makes it look quite nice. And we'll do it to this one as well. So twist both of the bottom wires if you're using square wire. So I've twisted that one as well. Just need to reshape those bends to go back out. So that's what we've got so far. So now this next bit is the fiddly bit. If you get this wrong, it's a little bit awkward to correct it because the more you bend your wires, the harder they get. So it's once you've bent your wires, it's hard to correct what you've done. You can to some extent. And if you've noticed, my stone has got a drill hole in it. I'm not actually using that drill hole. I just don't have any that aren't drilled. So you can ignore that. I'm not going to use that at all. So now you need to position your crazy wire shape against your stone. So decide which is going to be the front and the back of your stone. 
and position this on the back. I love the ready colour on this, so I'm going to have that as the front. So position it so the top of the loop is popping out the top of the stone like that. And then you need to hold it really firmly in place and I do hope I get this right first time. And we're going to bend these wires around the sides of the stone. And you've got to try and match them up as you're going so that you're going to try and get them both sort of the same height. It is a bit, it is fiddly this bit. But it's worth persisting with today because it is a lovely design when it's done. So looking at the front now, you need your bottom two wires to come around towards the bottom of the stone below the centre point. So the kind of, can you see where the wires are coming around the sides there? And then we're going to bend them over the stone. Trying to keep it central. You want the loop popping out the top there. And then one at a time, we're going to put a bend in these wires. And this is where it gets awkward because you've got to match up your bends and it's hard to hold everything in place. So I've put a loop around to the right there. And then this one, trying to hold it quite central. I'm going to do a loop around to the left. And my loops are uneven, <clears throat> uncentral, uneven, so I'm going to have a fiddle and level those up. But you get the idea, you just got to make a loop out to the one side and then a loop out to the other. So I've tried to match up my loops. It is really fiddly to do it because it just keeps jumping out. I've seen some people use a little bit of tape when they're working, like, like masking tape, like paper tape. So if you want to tape this to the stone here, which it might make it a little bit easier. On the back of mine is not 100% central, but I'm going to go with that. But that's what you want, those two shapes at the front. And then you want to take this twisted wire So this one is now below and the twisted wire has gone over the top there. I do it for the other one as well. So this wire is here is free and this has gone over the top of it. Now you've got to try and hold it steady. Make sure it's all pushed down where you want it to be. And we're going to take these wires around to the back told you it was fiddly but it is worth it because it's a lovely design when it's done and we've got that little separate veil to add as well so you can see how that's going to hold the stone eventually when it's all fixed down so keep pushing it down now we've got the wires going around the sides and then turn to the back and these side wires, I'm still holding it in place and I'm still holding the wires at the front so I'm not going to misshape it. Bend these wires right over the back. Like that. Oh, come on. So, that's what we've got so far. So keep fiddling with your wires until you've got them the nice even shapes again and then we'll fix it together at the back. And now we're going to attach the wires at the back so holding it all as centrally and firmly in place as you can. I'm going to cut this wire and then holding it still all in place. I'm going to curl this wire around the bottom of the loop there now you have to hold try not to smash my nails off you have to try and hold the front in place so we don't misshape this but not too tight that we can't get it round there 
the loop there. I've wrapped it around, but I'm not going to tighten it just yet. I'm going to get the other side in, in case I've pulled it off central, and then I can adjust it. I'm going to pull that wire up a little bit. I'm going to cut this wire and wrap that around there, around the same place too. So when you're tightening these up here, if you pull them too tight, your stone is going to spring out the top. And you won't be able to push it back in so then you're gonna to have to loosen them off that's what i just did i tightened them up too much and i just couldn't get the stone back in so loosen it off squeeze the stone down tighten them up carefully one at a time until it holds it in and it's still not secure but this is the next stage of it it should all become secure in a minute when we finish it there's not much left to do now so that's holding it there for now and we've secured it at the back where these two wires are coming down like that that's our next bit so take these wires now holding it all still in place and we're going to come around to the front and again this could push it out of place so you've got to keep holding it down you want both those wires to come to the front You've got to keep pushing it down in place because those wires pushing in will make it squeeze up as well so then these wires need to go scoop up to the top and then this one needs to scoop up as well a nice gentle scoop so these wires need to come in and then they need to meet in the middle and then scoop out to finish the distance of the uh, the weave there at the top so keep pushing your stone down and that's the shape that you want to achieve at the front now this is a particularly fiddly design and i wasn't actually going to share it on here but i did put the finished thing on facebook and so many people asked me to do that particular one. I don't remember seeing anybody remember seeing this little pink one on Facebook? So many people asked for this design that I thought I'd give it a go. I chose a, a more puffy stone because that's what everybody's saying. They've got these puffy stones. And I tried to make the loops a bit bigger just to try and make it a bit easier to handle. So I, if this is extra fiddly for you, I don't normally put work on that is tricky to do. So now we're going to weave across these two wires so take your weaving wire and we'll start with three wraps around the bottom wire just to attach and slide that down to just below where the wires are going to meet there And then we're going to go, oh, I've got to put that out of the way. I want to put it out of the way, but I want to hold it. That's it. Then we're going to go over the opposite wire. And put it together so they do meet. I'm going to make sure my stone stays down in place. So then go around that top wire again. And then we'll go over this bottom wire. So we've gone around the bottom wire and we go around it again. So now your wires need to be shaped so that they come out to sit at the bottom of this weave here, that width. So keep going on that same weave now and try not to let your wires come together. So you've got to keep doing that over the opposite wire and then go around it again. And you've got to keep doing that now and don't let your wires come together. You want to keep that nice gap over the opposite wire. 
and around again over the opposite wire and around again and try and push it together and try and hold everything in place oh how fiddly how fiddly is this one this time we shall have to do an easy one next week so keep going over your opposite wire and around again so do a few more repeats of that weave and I'm going to finish with a few wraps around that bottom wire cut the weaving wire off at both ends and then take your wires push your stone right down so it's definitely in place and bend the wires over the top of the stone so at this point now we're going to take these top wires we're going to bend them around the weave loop at the top there so I'm holding it in place with my thumb at the top quite firmly because I don't want it to move so we pull that round I'm not going to tighten it because I want to do the other side as well so take that wire you kind of you're kind of teasing it around because you don't want to be pulling on these wires because you'll pull it all out of place. So you're kind of easing it, easing it around that top part. You want it nice and tight but you don't want it too tight at the minute. So check it's all in shape. Now mine has shifted off to the one side a little bit. So I need to tighten up this side some more without breaking my nails off. So now you just need to wriggle it tighter into place without misshaping it. So tighten it up, have a look and see if you need to adjust anything and then tighten it up some more. And then when you're happy with it, still holding it in place at the front bend these wires over to the back and we're going to cut them and then just bend them around where say it's all the pliers gone just to secure it in place around this weave and then I'm just going to squeeze it around the weave. And I'll do that with the other side too. So now you should have something like this. And when you're showing your work online, please don't show the back of, um, you know, your work made from two tools because it does give the design away. And I prefer people come here and watch the videos. So now we've got this, you can either add just like a jump ring around this top part and you're done or we're going to make a little separate bale and this bale now that we're going to make you can fit to anything and it's not fiddly and it's quite easy to do so you can use round or square wire for this i think i'm going to opt for round wire my fingers have had enough of that square wire for one day i do find it a bit tough i don't know if it's the type of wire i've bought so find the center point pop it through your weave the, uh, the shorter length that I mentioned in the description at the beginning and find the center point to be right there and then bend it straight up so that's the center of that shorter wire and I want I want it to be quite tight around the, the weave but I want both wires to come up do you know what I mean so it goes around but then you pull both wires up so they're sat next to each other We're going to separate them slightly into a V. So 
So now we're going to weave on this nice little V-shape that we've made. So take your weaving wire. We're going to do this same weave that we did here so it all matches. So we'll wrap three times around the bottom wire to attach. It's going dark now. I hope my lights are enough so you can see what I'm doing. right down so as we did before we go over the opposite wire and then around again so we go over the opposite wire it's a bit fiddly to hold and then around again over and around over and around and make sure when you're doing this that you don't pull that hard that you pull the the wires together you want to keep that nice shape that nice v-shape that we've made already so take your time with this little weave and pull your wire nice and tight and keep pushing it down as you go but be careful not to push those wires together because you're going to crimple all that lovely weave don't know if crimple is a word so when we get to this point and you can make this bale as big or as small as you like we're then going to bend the outer wires in both sides taking care not to misshape your lovely wraps there so this is just like a standard bale that we're doing now only it's like just a reattached one so you want that kind of diamond shape and depending on the size bale if you want a bigger bale then come out wider so you've got a bigger diamond and you could have a thinner one if you want to or a smaller one it's entirely up to you and then where the wires cross at the top when you're happy with your shape grip that and bend those wires out so we've got that diamond shape now we're going to carry on weaving up to the top here but now the wire is going to keep trying to slide up so you've got to keep holding it down so hold it down on the one side while you do this side and I'm giving myself loads of wire there before I push it down so that it's, if it's too short it'll slide up and then holding this side down we're going to go over the other side and again I give myself loads of wire to make sure it pulls right the way down and then I'll go around again then we swap and hold this side down so really take your time and the, obviously the more you do the better you'll get the quicker you can do it i still do it really slowly it, the aim of the game is to keep pushing that wire down and then move to the other side so you're starting to slide back up already you just got to keep holding it down and keep going until you get to the top so i've woven up to the top there and if you've got little gaps all the way up don't worry because this part is the back and you won't see it as much so we need to cut off that tail end from the beginning flatten that and I've finished with three wraps on the opposite wire there at the top so I'm keeping my, wire, my weaving wire still attached for now and you need to take your bale pliers and we're going to bend this wire over the bale pliers so that the centre is at the top and then I'm going to Take the bottom of the weave there 
then I'm going to bend it out a little bit so that I can bring that together to make that nice loop shape. You can see you've got this little bail that's kind of on a loop at the top there. And now take your weaving wire. Let's have a look, I've got myself in a knot, haven't I? Take your weaving wire. Where is it? Here. And you want to go around the whole thing. You're wrapping around all of it. I'd go at least three times, maybe four. I'll go four. And then you want to finish with wrapping around one of those back wires just to secure your wire. So we go around there three times. So we've got a nice tidy little bail on the top. That's got to be the nicest bail I've done. I do still struggle with bales to get them nice and tidy. So when you've done that, I'm going to cut that wire. Flatten down that end. I'm really pleased with that little bail. So now to finish off these two wires, I'm going to bend them out to the sides. I'm going to cut them off quite short actually. I've started doing short videos of some of the tutorials that I've done and I plan to do a shorts for this one. So I'm going to have to make this all again just now to do another video. So we've cut it off both sides there and I'm just going to curl these up. Just do these are tiny curls. Just to finish it off so it doesn't snag on anything. And try not to squeeze your bail because you're going to crimple all that lovely weave. I'm just pulling those out to the side so they're nice and even. That one just need curling up a little bit more. Trying to match them up. There we have it. A nice little bail attached to the top. So I just need to oxidise it now. So thanks for watching. I know this one was a bit fiddly, but I hope I made it easy to see all the steps and understand how it's made. And this little uh, bail section on the top, you can add that to basically anything really if you want to. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And please mention me, Kelly Jones Design, when you're sharing your finished work made from my tutorials online. Thanks everybody. See you in the next one. Bye.